Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of July, and, um, and we are remembering St. Thomas today, St. Thomas the Apostle, uh, who's come down in history as Doubting Thomas, which is, of course, unfair to Thomas, but we are remembering Thomas this day. I'm indoors because it's been raining outside, and uh, I tried going out this morning, but my books were getting wet. So uh, I think <laughs> the the one week of summer is past, and uh, <laughs> we're back in autumn. Um, here, the second, the third day of July in London. Either way, we give God thanks for this new day and indeed um, ask his grace to sustain us on the journey ahead today and for the rest of this week. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. In glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Amen. And that, that canticle is taken from Isaiah chapter 61. All right, let's go to our psalm that's appointed for this St. Thomas's day, which is Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Amen. <laughs> 
it is, it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your love early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the nighttime. Upon the ten-stringed instrument, upon the harp, and to the melody of the lyre, for you, Lord, have made me glad by your acts, and I will sing aloud at the works of your hands. O Lord, how glorious are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. The senseless do not know, nor do fools understand, that though the wicked sprout like grass and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, shall be exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted, like the horns of wild oxen. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes will look down on my foes. My ears shall hear the ruin of the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be vigorous and in full leaf. That they may show that the Lord is true. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer, give us the music of your praise, O Lord, morning, noon, and night, that our lives may be fruitful, and our lips confess you as the true and only God. Amen the music of, our, of praise to God in the morning, at night time, all day long, we sing the praises of our great and gracious God. Sisters and brothers, let us not refrain from singing, singing the praises of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because God's enemies are scattered when God's people praise him. You know, there is, there is power in praise. There is strength in worship. Um, the, the, the enemies of God cannot stand in the presence of God's people when God's people starts to praise the Lord. You know, when we are when we feel down, when we feel like not singing, then we are to sing. <laughs> you know, and, and we don't need to sing songs that are happy all the time. There are songs of lament. Where are you, God? Uh, you know, songs that speak of the absence of God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But the point is, let us not stop praising and worshiping God because it is in praise that we are going to find, get our victory. It's in worship that the enemies of God will be scattered. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, your enemies shall perish and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. And how? When we when we tell of your love early in the morning and your faithfulness of, at night time on the ten string instrument, on the harp, the melody. In other words, when we sing, God's enemies are routed 
and indeed our enemies, because our enemies are God's enemies as well. Amen. Amen. Let's 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 move on to our next um our next reading. Um next uh canticle. Here is a great one from Psalm 89. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing of your forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it, sisters and brothers. Never stop praising the Lord. Let's um let's have the Benedictus. Um this morning, which is another song of praise in scriptures. There are a number of songs, quite apart from the Psalms themselves. We have some in the New Testament, and this is one of them. The Benedictus is a song of Zachariah in praise to God when God told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to bear the, the, the son, the prophet called John. So today, it's St. Thomas's day. Let's remember, let's say, let's sing with Zachariah, the Benedictus. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all of the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Amen. Let's go to our first reading, which is, we are still in uh, second, uh, we are still, oh no, this is second Samuel. We are, we are in second Samuel this morning, not first Samuel. In fact, second Samuel, it's a special reading for today, given that today is a special red letter day. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 17 to 21. 2 Samuel 15, from verse 17 to 21. The king and all his people set out on foot, pausing at the last house to let all the king's men move past to lead the way. There were 600 men from Gath who had come with David, along with the, the king's bodyguard. 
Then the king turned and said to Ittai, a leader of the men of Gath, Why are you coming with us? Go back to King Absalom, for you are a guest in Israel, a foreigner in exile. You arrived only recently. And should I force you today to wander with us? I don't even know where we will go. Go on back and take your kinsmen with you. And may the Lord show you his unfailing love and faithfulness. But Ittai said to the king, I vow by the Lord and by your own life that I will go wherever my Lord the king goes. No matter what happens, whether it means life or death. Uh, this is the reading. Um, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, it is a short. <coughs> it's a short reading, and I, I, I get the point of the reading. It is focusing on David's David's um, relationship to Itai. Itai the, um, from Gath, who is a, who is a non-Israelite, but is fighting in David's army. Um, this is, of course, when David, the king, fled from his son Absalom. If you remember the story, Absalom led a rebellion against the king in order to set himself up as king. And David fled, had to flee from his son and go and live in caves. As the king, and strangely, you know, because Absalom was ruthless and wanted to take over. He wanted to um, take over his father's throne. Anyway, so that, that, that's beside the point. This is, that's the background. The point is David says to Ittai, go back to the king and to your people. Take your people and go because I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen to me. And I don't want you to be caught up in the fray. The fact is you are not an Israelite. You are a foreigner. And, and I don't expect you to fight for the king of Israel. I mean, this is the, the point. You don't have any stake in this fight, says David to Ittai. But Ittai says, I vow by the Lord, by, by my own life, that I will go wherever you go. No matter what happens, whether it means life or death. And basically, Itai says, I am committed to you and to your God, David. And, 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 and it's a form of conversion. Itai, the, 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 the Philistine, the, the, this Gentile, has converted <laughs> to David's God and, David, and, David's, and David's religion, you could say. Um, and this is his way of saying it. I vow by God that I will die with you. I will go with you wherever you go, no matter what happens. And it is that commitment. It's a, and that is the focus of it. It's a commitment to God, to, 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 to be with God, to, to fight for him, to, to, to say, I will go, Lord, wherever you go. I will be wherever you are. I will die wherever you wish me to die. So, so this is Itai's commitment to David, but not just to David, but to the Lord himself, to the God of David. Itai, a foreigner. Itai, a non-Jewish person. Uh, uh, and someone who has a different religion altogether has converted to the God of Israel through King David. And, um, and so his commitment is the focus of our reading this morning. He's, he's committing him li his life to David, but not just to David, but to David's God as well. Um, I think the, the, the connection, of course, to Thomas is that Thomas was called by our Lord and committed himself to God. And his, his attitude was, unless I... I, I am able to witness the resurrection myself. Of course, I will not believe. And when the Lord, when the Lord appeared to Thomas and, and said, Thomas, no longer doubt but believe. Thomas surrendered his life 
to the Lord. In worship and praise, my Lord and my God. And this is, this is the parallel, as it were, with Ittai. Ittai surrendering, committing his life to the Lord and to David's God. And, um, and, and of course, that is, that is what we are all called to do. To surrender, to commit our lives to this same God. And say, Lord, no matter what happens, whether it means life or death, I will follow you to the end. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's leave that and move to our New Testament reading, which is John 11. So, again, we're not reading Luke this morning. We are looking at John chapter 11 from verse 1 to 16. <clears throat> John 11, 1 to 16. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. This is a Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Mar Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I am glad I wasn't there. But now you will, re you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, or Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go to and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. Oh, we need to stop there. That's where we stop this morning. I, again, <laughs> I'm getting carried away with the story. We, we, we stop at, 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 at Thomas because that is our focus this morning. Not so much on Lazarus and so on, but on Thomas. So what is the point that is being made here about Thomas? That is the question because we are remembering Thomas this morning. So Jesus is, is going to Bethany because Lazarus has died. Lazarus was sick, but now he's dead. And we are going to be told, we know the story, that he was dead and buried by the time Jesus got there. Something like a two or three days journey. Anyway, so, so we are told here that Thomas, when Jesus said, uh, we're going there because Lazarus is dead and I'm glad I wasn't there because you need to see the glory of God displayed in this, in this situation, um, they knew that going back to Judea was, 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 um, was risky for Jesus because Judea, that's where Jerusalem is, 
is where he's going to die. Bethany is just outside of Jerusalem. And, and they, of course, are, say, are cautioning Jesus. They're like his advisors saying, Lord, going back to Judea is just not the best thing for you right now. Um, there are people there trying to kill you. Um, you know, it's best to stay in the countryside, remain in Galilee. Uh, and Jesus says, no, I must go back. I must go. My friend is dead and I got to go back there to raise him and so on. And, and so Thomas's response to this is, let's go. Let's all go. And so, so that we can die with Jesus. Now, we don't know if Thomas actually real <laughs> meant what he said. Or was it facetious? Was it a sarcasm? Was he saying, all right, then we're going to come and die with you. I mean, you know, that's what it takes sort of. You know, it, it, it's just a throwaway word. Uh, we don't know. But whatever it was, was in Thomas's mind, Thomas was saying, let's go. Because if it means dying with him, we will die with him as well. They knew that Judea posed a threat to our Lord's existence, life. And, and, that, would, and that means, of course, a threat to their lives as well. Thomas says, come, let's go and die with him as well. Let's go to and die with Jesus. If he's going to die, let's die with him. Whatever Thomas meant by that, it is a powerful statement. And there is a sense in which that is what we are all called to do. It's that commitment. We go back to Itai. It's the commitment to say, Lord, I am coming with you and I'll go wherever you go. I'll die for you. Um, Every Christian, sisters and brothers, is called to that commitment. Remember Jesus said, you, you cannot follow me unless you are willing to take up your cross. Now the cross was a symbol of death. It's a symbol of suffering. It's a symbol of shame and disgrace. Jesus is saying, you cannot truly follow me unless you are willing to give up all of your comforts all that you regard as precious in this life uh, for the shame, for the dishonor, for the disgrace, for the suffering, for the death of the cross. And here Thomas says, Lord, we will come with you so that we will die with you. Itai said, I will go with you even to death. That's that commitment that Jesus is calling upon us all to have, sisters and brothers. You know, I, I, the, the, the church is filled with people who are coasting along, sort of like on a roller coaster, and they're enjoying the journey. Um, we, we in the Western world have not been called, as it were, have not, have not had the opportunity to bear the cross the way we should. And if we are called upon to go to Bethany, to go to Judea with Jesus, would we be like Thomas? Come, let us go and die with him. Um, or would we say, Lord, we don't want to go to Judea. Um, it's death waiting for you down there. No, Thomas says, we'll go. We will die with you if it needs be. You know, um, Bonhoeffer, there's a great quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, a book that every Christian should read. Every Christian should read. Along with your Bible, you should have The Cost of Discipleship. Um, uh, Bonhoeffer said, when Christ calls us, he bids us come and die. Come and die. And that is it. That's what the cross is. Death is the ultimate, the ultimate end, of course. But it means suffering, it means, it means persecution, it means giving up all that we hold dear in this world for the eternal. Um, there's another great um, missionary who said, who made the statement, um, he, he is no fool or she is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Hallelujah. 
he is no fool or she is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep. That is the world, this world, the things of this world. We can't keep it. We never will take it with us in order to gain that which we cannot lose, eternal life in Jesus Christ. That is a call. Are we committed like Itai, like Thomas, to say, Lord, I will go with you even to death? That is our challenge this morning, sisters and brothers, as we remember Thomas. You see, we remember Thomas as a doubting Thomas. We don't remember the Thomas who said, Lord, I will let us all go to Judea so that we can die with you. It's a commitment. There's a sense that I am willing. Let's all go. Come on, gang. Let's go. If it means death, so be it. Amen. Let's pray. It's a challenge indeed. <clears throat> Lord and God, we thank you for this new day. We pray, O oh God, that you'll give us this grace, indeed, give us the courage, like an Itai, like Thomas, to be willing to say, I will go where you go. I will do what you've asked me to do, dear Lord. I will die where you want me to die. Lord, if it means suffering for your sake, I will do it. I, will, I am willing to take up the cross of shame, disgrace, the cross of suffering and death for your sake. Oh God, give us grace to be willing to say this today and be committed to this. Like Itai was committed to David's Lord and David, like Thomas, being committed to our Lord to die with him. Lord, give us this commitment, we pray, not just to say with our lips, but to live this in our lives so that we know that the cost of discipleship, the cost of following you is to deny self and all that self involves. Take up our cross and follow you. Lord, in ourselves, we cannot do this. Because we love ourselves, we care for ourselves, we want to protect ourselves. And yet, Lord, you've called us to the very opposite, denial of self for your sake. Lord, give us grace to do this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So as we remember Thomas today, Lord, we pray for all your people everywhere. We remember all the churches and communities named in honor of St. Thomas. We pray for them. We pray for um, all those who, are, who worship in, in, in those communities, the ministers of churches dedicated to St. Thomas. And so we pray for those people today and all your people everywhere. We pray for every church family in every community today. And so, Lord, we offer to you all the church, the, the whole church, the universal church in every community. And we pray for your grace upon your people today that every church and every parish will be committed to follow you to Judea if needs be, to the place of death, to the place of suffering and crucifixion. Lord, we pray for your people that you will protect your church. Watch over your people in every, in, the, in every corner of our earth. Lord, we pray that you will help us to be the salt and light that you've called us to be, the faithful witnesses. Lord, in our relationships, in our families, and indeed on our community and our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church family. We pray for all those that are on our prayer list, we pray for those that we've been praying for, the individual people who want to pray this morning, continue to pray for Pauline's um, relative, uh, sister-in-law, Margaret. We pray for Anne's brother, Ian. Uh, we pray for Mr. and Mrs. Blake. Oh, we want to pray for Maxine's family as they move this week, I think today, from where they're living to another place. We pray for them. We pray for her daughter, Lourdes, 
We pray, Lord, that you will direct her and guide her and keep her safe in, a, in, in, in going astray, as it were. But Lord, we pray that you bring her back home to her family. So Lord, we pray for this family as they, as they seek to, to, to start a, uh, a new life in a new place. And Lord, we ask that you will guide them and lead them to the right church so that they will, they will find a place to worship you uh, with other people of God. So Lord, we pray for these and all the others on our prayer list this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for the Caribbean this morning as they are threatened with hurricane burial. We pray for all over the Caribbean. Apparently, it is heading for Jamaica. And so we pray for the people of Jamaica and indeed uh, in all, all over the Caribbean that are affected by hurricane Barry. Lord, we pray for these people and we pray that you will protect them from this storm, from the violence of this storm. And that, Lord, you will protect the lives and there'll be no loss of lives. Lord, we pray that you'll, uh, that you'll calm the storm as it were and as it were, and, and, and Lord, we pray that this storm will pass, will pass over, will pass through without, without any great damage. And so, Lord, we entrust the people of the Caribbean and indeed Jamaica into your hands this new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our election tomorrow. Lord, we pray for the outcome of that, this, this our election in our own country, that Whatever the outcome, Lord, we pray that you will be in it. We remember that the die is cast, but the outcome is from the Lord. And, and so, Lord, as we, as we vote tomorrow, we pray that the result will be your doing. And, Lord, that you will uh, put the right government in place for this country, for the future of this country, for, for those who are vulnerable and weak and Suffering, Lord, we pray that you will, that you will elect, as it were, place, at a point, choose the right person and the right government to lead this country into the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our world, pray for peace in the Holy Land, peace in Gaza, peace in Israel, peace in Ukraine, peace in Sudan and wherever else there is conflict in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our collect for today. This collect is a collect for St. Thomas. Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son till word and sight convinced him. Grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and, on our, God, and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his all-sufficient grace to sustain you along your journey of faith today, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.